Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is JD Sharma and you are watching Inglit. And today's topic will be some of the most important questions on Alfred Lord Tennyson, which will be beneficial for your preparation of NTNET and other TGT and PGT examinations. So let's start the video. The very first question is Tennyson's The Princess is a socio comic attempt to handle the theme that was then known as the lady, the new woman the arrogant woman or the illiterate bell and the correct answer of this question is the theme was the new woman the princess is basically known for the concept of new woman before we explain what Tennyson tried to say in the princess first let us understand the concept of new woman actually new woman refers to any independent woman seeking social political or radical change the phrase first used by Irish writer Sarah Grant and it was further popularized by Henry James. Henry James was British American writer, novelist and he used it to describe the growth in the number of feminist, educated, independent career women in Europe and USA. So you can say that new woman is any, any woman who is career oriented and financially free, educated and wants to remain independent and who wants to create a niche, a separate niche for herself in the society. So Tennyson through this princess wants to say something about the women. Primarily this princess, the poem, the long narrative poem was aimed at women's education and other thing, other important thing, other important factor or objective was to set up female educational institutions. The princess had a subtitle, a medley. So the princess, a medley that was published in 1847. The name of the princess in the poem is Princess Ida. Apart from its theme based on women's education and female educational institutions, this poem is basically known for some of the best lyrics of Alfred Lord Tennyson like Tears, Ideal Tears, New Sleeps, The Crimson Petal, Now the White, The Splendor Falls, Ask Me No More. As according to W.H. Auden, his genius was lyrical. So W.H. Auden suggested that his genius was lyrical. Tennyson was basically a lyricist, a lyric writer. And the glimpse of those lyrics can be best seen in the long narrative poem the princess. It was written in blank words and it is known as anti-feminist fantasia. Second question of the series is Lord Tennyson wrote a comedy on the story from Boccaccio. Identify the title of the comedy. So basically Tennyson was not a writer of lyrics. He wrote comedies and some of the best dramas as well. So he wrote some comedy and what was the title of that story, that comedy? Was it the falcon, the cup, the foresters? or the Queen Mary. All of these are dramas. So the comedy was The Falcon. Falcon was published in 1884 and this year he was made peer as well. Peer is a kind of title that knight sir. So he was conferred this title peer in 1884 and on the same year he wrote, he published this comedy The Falcon. The Falcon is generally associated with this other drama The Cup. Falcon is a comedy as we have seen, while the cup is a tragedy. These two dramas are taken together all the time, commonly. The Falcon is one act play, so it is shorter play and it was set in 13th century. Italy, the Falcon and the cup, they were published together in the same volume, same year, in one volume. And these are the only comedies which do not have the English setting. Otherwise, Tennyson wrote other comedies or other tragedies that had their settings in England or English setting. But these two comedies, one comedy and one tragedy, they had their setting outside England. So the falcon had its setting in Italy. The cup has its setting in ancient Galatia. As the question suggests itself, the comedy is based on Boccaccio's story Decameron. Decameron actually is a collection of 100 tales. It was written by Italian writer Boccaccio and that was published in 1353. The Falcon is a story of Count Federigo. Count Federigo who impoverished himself by giving expensive gifts to a widowed lady Giovanni whom he loved patiently from young manhood. So he was in love with a young widow and then over whom he has spent lavishly and because of that he became 
rather poor so that is the story and how the the plot unfolded later on the story is all about the falcon was a bird of count federico which he liked most it was his prized possession the story of the cup has been taken from plutarch plutarch you know he was a greek biographer and some of the stories were the inspiration source for shakespeare so he is the same plutarch the cup has been said on the story of plutarch both the falcon and the cup they are based on the concept of love the comedy and the tragedy they are the center upon love the forestry is the last drama of tennyson and it is also paired it is also known with some other play that is the promise of may as we always take the falcon and the cup together so the forester and the promise of may they are also together they are tennyson's last dramas forester is a comedy and the prim- the promise of the rose is a tragedy the foresters is basically known for the legendary days of robin hood robin hood like garibo kamasiha type character so it is based in 12th century it recreates the legends of robin hood the promise of the rose is a village tragedy it is called village tragedy so it is a tragedy and its setting is contemporary contemporary english society queen mary and some other play herald so they are also a pair it was published in 1875 queen mary is a full length play in five acts and it centers on the history of marian england marian england means the period of tudor trial queen mary whom queen elizabeth succeeded so primarily it deals with the question of princess elizabeth as a potent heir heir to the throne english throne queen mary is the first play the foresters the last and queen mary the first the other themes of queen mary are her unrequited love for her husband prince philips of spain and her obsession with providing male heir to the english throne and her desire to restore roman catholicism to england so primarily queen was queen mary was concerned about the english throne the heir to the english throne she wanted male heir to the throne unfortunately they had none so it was suspicious whether queen elizabeth would be a queen and then she would rule accordingly or not that was the question in the mind of queen mary so the play centers on all those things along with these dramas tennyson wrote one more drama becket so becket was thomas a becket the archbishop of canterbury about whom you have heard or read in the canterbury tales and uh, he was the character in thomas eastern eliot's the modern cathedral so here the same theme has been recreated by tennyson and it was published in 1884 so becket the falcon and the cup all these three dramas were published in 1884 next question tennyson's ambition of writing poetry was to take the hiss out of the language means what did he mean by the his taking the his out of the language to make the language more simple by using more s or liquid sounds to make the metrical composition more ornamental and scholastic to take out the inner gust of romantic spirit or to make the poetry simple by leaving out the letters wherever possible and filling all the lines with liquid l's and m's to make syllable more ripe and that is the correct answer so his ambition or his task was to leave the letter s the sound the his sound he was not concerned about that s sound very much wherever it was possible and he wanted to make the lines more liquidified as tennyson is known to be very much scientific as far as prosody is concerned he experimented with the theme or not only the theme but with the choice of words and their uses he found the music in the words and the music can be felt in short lyrics like break 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 or crossing the bar and some other other lyrics so he was very squeamish very choosy about using the prosody using the poetical themes or poetical constituents so he experimented with the choice of words and how those how those words could be used so as to realize his ambition of writing poetry he polished and revised his manuscripts extensively so whenever he composed he revised his manuscript quite extensively and he polished it by just working on the words working on the choice and the the symmetry of the words by the music of the words particularly 
so as far as music of the words so wherever this phrase comes to your mind so you should concern yourself with tennyson so tennyson used the words with their music he experimented in adopting the quantitative meters of greek and latin his inclination or his win his temperament was tragic melancholic and because of this iliad calls him the saddest of all the english poets whose technical mastery of verse and language provided the surface to his poetry's depths to the abyss of sorrow however some of the writers like robert browning did not like this quality robert browning said about him that his quality was insane symptomatic of mental infirmity so according to robert browning it was his uh, infirmity the lack of capability about dealing with the words or the uses of the words somewhat similar was the view point of w h auden about him w h auden said about him that tennyson was the stupidest there was little about melancholy he did not know there was little else that he did however what whitman said about the quality of his work or his choice of words that he was the finest verbalist he used the musical qualities of the words to emphasize his rhythm he experimented with the words paintings of the external beauties he was master in word paintings of the external beauties of nature he used his observation his accuracy in description to the minutest details and he also used his keen sense of value of words and phrases that he had a strong sense of music in words next question man for the field and woman for the hearth man for the sword for the needle she man to command and woman to obey all else confusion these lines display victorian conservatism identify the poet so from which of the following poems these lines have been taken which show the victorian conservatism the lines show the typical patriarchal notion that were prevalent in the society tennyson is basically known for the representation of victorian society he was the true representative of victorian society so what else he found in the society he wrote so from which poems these lines have been taken it is from mary queen enoni mark the pronunciation of this title it is e no ni enoni was it northern farmer or was in the princess and the correct answer is these lines have been taken from the princess about whom we had talked in the earlier question so as i told you that it was the princess was so as i told you about the princess it was anti feminist fantasia and it was about the the education of women and it was about setting of women educational institutions particularly universities so that women could have an access to education because in victorian society women had hardly any chance or any access to education that's why this line show men for the field and women for the hearth hearth means in the kitchen so men will work outside and women have to remain inside the home cooking for the meal and men for the sword or men will be the brave person or the warriors so they will go in the battlefield they will go in the field to earn the livelihood but for she will be for the needle the the household chores the sewing and cooking and washing the utensils or some so on and so forth and men to command and women to obey so commandment was in the hands of men women were supposed to obey all the commandments so they did not have any say in the family all they had to simply comply simply obey to the orders and the commandments of the men and everything else was confusion so if any other theory was there so this was confusion this was not clear and as such it was not practiced so these lines are from the princess actually princess is known for the lines like this and some more which show the typical patriarchy similar is the line that man is the hunter women is his game so the same kind of mentality is being shown in this quotation man is the hunter woman is his game so woman was a plaything in the hands of men she did not have any separate existence apart from men whatever man wanted her to do she had to comply she did not have anything to do according to her own choice actually she did not have any choice she was merely a game the rules of which was made by men 
as i told you that princess is mainly known for the the lyrics so some the lyrics i'm telling you or oh, swell and the far from cliff and scar the horns of affland faintly blowing this is one of the songs other song sweet and low sweet and low wind of the western sea low low breathe and blow wind of the western sea the princess was parodied parodied means it was mocked by w s gilbert when he adopted this princess this poem in his book the princess the princess and some other book the princess ida it was published in 1817 70 sorry and it was 1884 so it was mocked at it was parodied it was its spoof so this is important fact as far as inoni is concerned it was published in the collection poems actually it it was the famous collection that was published in 1832 and revised in 1842 some of the best uh, poems of tennyson were published in this collection and in this one the collection name is poems only so it was first published in 1832 and it was revised in 1842 in this collection uh, the lady of shallot two voices the lotus eaters dream of fair women and some other famous poems of tennyson they were published so inoni was a greek character greek mythological character and she was a nymph nymph means a fairy of water and then who was abandoned by her husband paris you must have heard the name of paris in trojan war paris fell in love with helen and this caused the spartans to be angry and then they mounted on troy and then the the war lasted for 10 years and then everything was destroyed so for helen paris abandoned left this nymph inoni the name of the nymph was inoni the poem is a tragic recounting of the feelings of inoni what she suffers in the bereavement when her husband paris left her for some other lady helen it is a dramatic monologue inoni was mainly targeted targeted by wilson crocker wilson crocker and lockhart wilson crocker from quarterly review in the previous video i told about this quarterly review and and wilson crocker who targeted john keats byron shelley so he did not leave even tennyson Tennyson targeted this collection. He did not give the favorable review of this collection, the poems, and his chief target was in this collection, Inoni. He thought that the poem was filled with unclear descriptions. It is focused on the unclear descriptions. So you must remember Wilson Crocker here as well. Northern farmer was very much special for Tennyson because say, he experimented in this poem the use of Lincolnshire dialect, and Lincolnshire dialect was the 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 country of tennyson's birth he was born in lincolnshire so he used the same dialect the same kind of setting the same kind of linguistic variant in this northern farmer and uh, the northern farmer was published in two phases northern farmer old style northern farmer new style so two poems northern farmer first northern farmer old style second poem the northern farmer the new style they were published between 1864 and 65 so the poems they render the the closer look to landscape tradition and characters of the country of his birth next question who said about tennyson that he is decidedly the greatest poet of our living poets was it pb shelley pb shelley can be easily ruled this this kind of trick you have to use in the examination because pb shelley died in 1800 22 and tennyson was born on 1809 and died in 1892 so pb shelley was too young to comment on the poet like tennyson and tennyson's output was not very much apparent by the time pb shelley died so there is no question of pb shelley's commenting on tennyson this kind of option can be easily ruled so you have to focus on the options as well all the options so was it matthew arnold T. S. Eliot or Harold Bloom, and among these, Matthew Arnold is the correct option. T. S. Eliot said about Tennyson that he is the greatest master of metric as well as melancholia, who has the finest ear of any English poet since Milton. Harold Bloom, in his uh, in his book Alfred Lord Tennyson, Bloom's Poets. So his uh, series was Bloom's Poets, and among those Bloom's Poets, or in that series, he wrote about Alfred Lord Tennyson. 
The Tennyson has a few rivals as a writer of English and his work achieves permanent importance by reflecting the main movement of mind and morals. What Whitman called him the boss. The boss was an attribute given by Walt Whitman. Alfred Lord Tennyson influenced pre-Raphaelite brotherhood for what qualities? Medievalism and powerful visual imagery. So Tennyson influenced this pre-Raphaelite brotherhood, D.G. Rossetti or the gang members. So for his medievalism, the use of medieval themes and concepts and the visual imagery, the world paintings particularly. Queen Victoria was herself very much fond of this poet and Tennyson was a poet laureate as well. He succeeded William Wordsworth in 1850. So he was made poet laureate succeeding William Wordsworth in 1850. This point has to be also remembered very carefully. She wrote in her diary that he was very peculiar looking, tall, dark, with a fine head, long black flowing hair and a beard, oddly dressed, but there is no affectation about him. So he was what he was, without any affectation, without any bombastic attitudes in his manners. T.H. Huxley, he said about Tennyson that Tennyson is the first poet since Lucretius who understood the drift of science. As we talked about his sensibilities about prosody, T.H. Huxley said about his scientific approach to words, to the language. So what a special quality T.H. Huxley noted in this, in this poet, it was Tennyson's ability to interpret plain science to divine its general direction. Next question, Tennyson's The Two Voices was originally entitled. The Two Voices had some other uh, title in, a, in the beginning as well. So what was that title? Was it The Miller's Daughter, Timbuktu, Poems by Two Brothers? Or thoughts of suicide so the correct answer is the thoughts of suicide was the original title that he intended for this poem the two voices it was published in 1833 and 34 and it was included in the collection poems that two of 1842 not 32 because it was written in between 33 and 34 so there was no question of including this in the collection of poems of 1832 it was included in the collection poems of 1842 that is the main thing and why did he choose this title thoughts of suicide because he was very much grieved about the death death of his friends arthur helm so he had two voices like to be or not to be type timbuktu was called prize poem he received or won chancellor's medal for this poem and this was published in 1829 so in his early days he wrote this poem and then he was uh, conferred upon this prize chancellor's medal he was poet laureate as well i said to you that he was made poet laureate in 1850 succeeding william wordsworth and this was the first poem in blank verse to win this title prior to this poem no other poem in english literature uh, succeeded in winning this chancellor's medal so timbuktu by tennyson was the very first poem written in blank verse to win chancellor's medal Poems by Two Brothers is a collection by two brothers. And who were these two brothers? Two brothers of Tennyson himself. What was the name of those brothers? Frederick Tennyson and Charles Tennyson. Frederick and Charles Tennyson. Although Tennyson contributed this to this collection by more than half. More than half. But he gave the credit to the whole uh, collection to his brothers. He also contributed and his contribution was more than half. And this collection came in the year 1826. Next question, which of the following poems includes a choric song? Means in which of the following poems there is a, a choric song, the chorus. Chorus as we see in some of the tragedies or comedies. The main task of chorus is to introduce the action of the plot. They also come in between the proceedings. So whatever incidents the writer does not want to show on the stage uh, uh, are narrated by the chorus. The chorus also comes at the end of the play. For summing up so in which of the following poems there was a use of course was in the in memoriam mariana locksley hall or the lotus eaters the correct answer is it was in lotus eaters that the appearance of chorus was there lotus eaters as i told you before that it was the collection poems of 1832 the poem was inspired by his visit to spain with arthur helm Arthur Hallam and Tennyson visited Spain and then their visit inspired many other poems. Poem describes a group of mariners who upon eating lotus are put into some kind of altered state, intoxicated state and then they felt like isolated from the outside world. It was just like they had tasted some kind of intoxicating drug. So it was not a drug itself, it was the flower lotus so they ate it and then they found so intoxicated that they they felt that they they were in some other world 
and they did not want to return to the normal the conscious world the leader leader wants to address them reminding them their duty but those mariners they did not want to go from there because they felt that the aim of life has been realized by now and there is no further going so the poem focuses on that incident the concept is taken from odyssey by homer so the leader i am talking about is odysseus himself when they were returning to their houses so some of the mariners they felt intoxicated by uh, by the lotus and then they did not want to return to because they felt the futility of their return it is 17 years or more than 17 years since they left their house so they feel that going to their house would disturb the regular proceedings that were happening in their houses it is also a dramatic monologue this this poem was also severely criticized by william wilson crocker he labeled the lotus eaters to be opium eaters and further he say that tennyson mr tennyson himself a dreamy lotus eaters so in writing lotus eater it is suggested that tennyson himself lost his consciousness he was writing this poem under the intoxication of some kind of drug like opium in memoriam as i told you that it was written it is an elegy it was written on the death of arthur helm and it was written between 1833 and 1850 and it was published anonymously he did not give it his name then when it was published arthur helm died in vienna and arthur helm was 22 years of age he was engaged to the sister of tennyson emily tennyson in memoriam is divided into 132 sections and it is mainly written in tennysonian stanzas tennysonian stanza means a kind of new stanza that he devised it for himself it was a four line stanza which had set rhyme a b b a so the stanza having this rhyme was the main kind of poetic form in which this poem is written broadly speaking in memoriam is a set of lyrics is a collection of lyrics it has an epilogue written at the end of the poem and epilogue is a merry song on the occasion of his sister cecilia one sister was emily who was engaged to arthur helm and other sister was cecilia g h lewis referred to this poem as the solace and delight of every house where a poetry is loved eliot also said about this poem that in memoriam is a poem of despair but of despair of a religious kind mariana and other poem like this mariana in the south there were two poems mariana of these two poems was suggested by mariana of so idols of the king is in 12 section 12 section or 12 books which you can say in the compliance of classical epic this is written in blank words and it provides the modern context for the arthurian story the epic epic follows 51 lines preceding and 30 lines following 30 lines following this passing the arthur or mortar the arthur it provides the modern context for the arthurian story or arthur story what does this frame means it is cast as a manuscript read aloud by the poet to three of his friends actually four friends gathered in which one person one poet host and one narrator was there so the poet was telling the story of arthur king arthur and what he told this was the story content of the 51 lines served as a frame in which this story fell and this was concluded by further 30 lines and when the entire book was published this frame this epic poem was dissolved initially it was the frame but later on it was dissolved lady of shallot was published in 1832 i told you in the beginning in the collection poems and it was further revised in 1842 one as well in the first there were 20 stanzas in the second there were 19 stanzas the poem tells the story of an enchanted weaver the lady who was a weaver and who is left in a tower by her lover and later on she was left to die she died later on lady of the shallot was famously illustrated by the artist j w waterhouse like this illustration it is a lyrical ballad and it comprises many songs as well beautiful songs tithonus was published in 1833 it's a dramatic monologue or interior monologue originally it was written as tithon following the classical mythological the concept of classical mythology tithonus was an immortal character and his immortality was asked by eos eos was the goddess of dawn this question comes many times who was the goddess so it was the goddess of dawn eon asked zeus the god of thunderstorm about the immortality of tithonus but she forgot to ask for the the everlasting youth with the passage of time tithonus went on aging and aging the old age was very much torturing to him and later on he wants to 
to die. In this uh, dramatic monologue, he addresses Eos and warns the death. Tennyson describes Tithonus as a pendant to the Ulysses. In one of the letters, Tennyson describes Tithonus that he was a pendant to the Ulysses in my former volumes. The fourth line of the poem Tithonus served as the title for Elder Saxley's novel After Many Summers or it was retitled After Many Summers Dies the Swan. This point is very much important. Next question which of the following poems is, is written in blank verse? It is wrongly written. Not, not is not there. The question should be read as which of the following poems is written in blank verse? So was it The Idols of the King, Break Break Break, Maud, or the charge of light brigade so i told you before that idols of the king was written in blank verse it was written between 1855 and 1874 and it is a series of arthurian poems there are 12 sections the first is the coming of arthur last is to the queen to the queen queen is queen victoria herself so in the last section he eulogizes queen victoria he praises queen victoria it describes the last moments of arthur after the battle this book also includes an elegy of on round table and it is delivered to sir bidiver the the poem is addressed to sir bidiver or this elegy was also addressed to sir bidiver in which the famous line old order changeth yielding place to new is so the complete idols of the king the whole book idols of the king presents the story of king arthur when he meets queen guinevere to his destruction of the realm in the last. G.M. Hopkins says that this is the Sherrard's from the Middle Ages. This quotation is very much important. Break 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 was written in 1835 and published in 1842. It is an elegy that everyone must have heard. It describes a poet's feelings of loss after Arthur Hallam died. So similar to the In Memoriam, this is a shorter version, a very short poem but very intense in its feelings. The poem also presents his sense of isolation, the feelings of isol isolation. The poem describes the realization that there is something beyond the cycle of life and death. Crossing the bar and on the mourner are also similar to break break break. They also describe the feeling of a sense of alienation or sense of loneliness. Break 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 is written in 16 lines with the, the rhyming scheme of A B C B D E F E A B C B D E F E. Mod is called a monodrama. This serves as a subtitle to this poem Mod. It was published in 1855. It originates from the lyric, Oh, that it were possible, that Tennyson composed in 1833. So, from that lyric, the poem Mod originates. This poem is also best known for its lyrics. And the best known lyrics are, I have led her hair come into the garden Mod. So, the reference of Crimean War is also in Mod. The Charge of Light Brigade was published in 1854 and it narrates the charge of the Light Brigade at the Battle of Balakleba during the Crimean War. Battle of Balakleba and this poem describes the great casualties. Many people died in that charge. They had to take because it was their responsibility to move ahead in the battle. But this battle cost them huge loss. Kipling also wrote the last of the Light Brigade. So you have to be very much careful about these two, two titles. The charge of the Light Brigade is composed by Tennyson and the last of the Light Brigade is composed by Rudyard Kipling. The poem of Rudyard Kipling shows the terrible hardships that the people of this Light, light Brigade in their old days had to suffer. So the charge of the light brigade shows the casualties and the suffering of the people who were fighting the battle. And the poem of Rudyard Kipling shows when these people, the, the remaining people, the remaining people when they were in their old age, so what hardship this they had to suffer in their old age. The last question, Thomas Edison made sound recording to Tennyson reciting his own poems late in his life. Which of the following poems did Tennyson include in his recording? So when Thomas Edison started a recording sound recording of some of the poems so it was the privilege to Tennyson that his poem was being recorded by himself and the task was being done by Thomas Edison so which poem Tennyson used or recorded in his own voice was it Splendor Falls the Kraken the Charge of the Light Brigade or the Gardener's Daughter and this was the charge of the light brigade. Tennyson recorded this, this poem in his own voice that was done by Thomas Edison. About the charge of light brigade I have told already. Splendor Falls is sometimes called 
द बगल सॉन्ग बगल सॉन्ग जस्ट लाइक अ क्लेरियन फॉर इट्स म्यूजिकल क्वालिटी एंड इट इज वन ऑफ द सॉन्ग ऑफ द प्रिंसेस इट वॉज इट वॉज ओरिजिनली इंक्लूडेड इन द प्रिंसेस इट्स राइमिंग स्कीम इज ए ए बी सी सी बी डी डी सो दिस इज द राइमिंग स्कीम द क्रैकन वॉज रिटर्न इन एटीन एंड थर्टी in poems chiefly lyrical it is a petrarchan sonnet but of 15 lines the speciality of this sonnet is that it is in 15 lines only while regular sonnets particularly petrarchan sonnets they are of 14 lines but this sonnet is of 15 lines comprises one octave of two sets and sestet of seven lines the rhyming scheme is a b a b c d c d e g g f e so variation lies here in the sestet part and kraken is a sea monster sea monster which is supposed to have swallowed so many ships in classical mythology so the poem shows his vastness his bulk size its rise to the surface of the sea and finally its death so the poem shows how it became so much vast how it got its vastness how it came to the surface of the sea and how it met his death so it is a legendary sea monster which ate so many ships of the coast of norway the gardener's daughter is just like miller's daughter which is basically known for the pictures or the pictures the subtitle is the pictures the gardener's daughters or the pictures it is basically known for the picturesque quality the landscape the scenic view that is shown in the poem it was published in 1842 and it is one of the english idols english idols that were written in 1842 it is in blank verse and it is a tale of love and friendship it celebrates his deep friendship with arthur helm and helm love for his beloved emily tennison who was the sister of tennison so that is all for now hopefully this video added something to your existing knowledge of tennison and the points i have discussed they are useful for your preparation of net and tgt pgt and if you like this video do share among your friends so that they may also be benefited and if you have not subscribed to the channel so far please subscribe it and keep studying stay motivated thanks for watching